Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we're trying to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today, still in the realm of statics, straightforward problem, car being pulled by two ropes. Uh, we're going to use force triangles, we're going to use law of signs, we're going to use all the things that we've done uh, plenty here in the channel, so you can check them out here if you haven't yet. A lot of videos explaining where this comes from, origins, proofing some of the things. So, you know, nothing new on this problem. Problem statement reads, a disabled automobile is pulled by means of two ropes as shown. The tension in rope AB is 2.2 kilonewtons and the angle alpha is 25 degrees. Knowing that the resultant of the two forces applied at A is directed along the axis of the automobile or automobile determined by trigonometry the tension in rope AC and the magnitude of the resultant of the two forces applied at A. So what we have here, um, we have AB, there's a tension here being applied at AB, that tension happens to be 2.2 kilonewtons, we know that from the problem statement, and then there's also AC, it's also applying a tension, I'm just going to call it AC for now because it's one of the unknowns, and there's an angle of 25 degrees here, there's obviously an angle of 30 degrees here, and and this is very important not to be overlooked, the resultant force is directed along the axis of the car. So what does that mean? Well, there's two ways to interpret this. One way is to think, okay, so that if we take these two forces and we can do that like so, boom, this, res this result in here is the one we're looking for, and it happens to be right over this axis of this car here. That's one way to think about it. The other way is, if you go back a little bit, is, you know, there's a tension um, AB, there's tension AC, and obviously because of Newton's third law, the car will have a force reacting to these tensions, right? And it happens to be uh, along the axis of the car. Um, and this, you know, assuming that because it's the statics, we assume there's no um, the sum of forces is zero, so this um, car is traveling, if it's traveling, at a constant velocity. And that's another way of thinking of it. This is the reaction of the car. So regardless of if you think about it as the resultant being the sum of the two or the result resultant being the reaction of the car, right, it's going to be the same thing at the end of the day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put this down here. And then we're going to make a copy of this, make a copy of this here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a triangle of these forces. So I'm going to have, well, let's do this one here first. One coming down, then one coming up, and they together form a triangle. Now, we've seen before in the channel, if you want to check it here, that it doesn't really matter how you make this triangle, as long as you make it with the three forces you're looking at. Uh, you're always going to get it right. Okay, so what does this triangle look like? It looks like this. There's a one of the forces on the horizontal. This is a car, what I'm calling car. Then I have a C coming downwards, and I have a B coming upwards. A, a B happens to be 2.2 kilonewtons, and it makes a 30 degree angle with the horizontal like so. This guy here makes a 25 angle with the horizontal, so that's one of the sides of a triangle. Straight forward and little hassle. Okay, so if we can find a second angle, we are pretty much done, right? And to do that, there are two ways you can think about it. One way is if you know that you know that an angle um, with the horizontal like so, let's call it x, if you know this guy has to be x2. If you don't know that, I'll show it to you real quick. But there's another way to think about this, but I'm gonna let's just pretend it's y for the sake of it, okay? That's y, and this is, remember, this is a horizontal line right here. 
So that means that this angle blue here is 180 minus x, right? Because the whole thing here is 180, right? So this blue here is 180 minus x. And, and this green one here has to be 182 because that's a straight line right there. Right, so 180 will be equal to 180 minus x plus y, right? Because the green one is the blue one. The green one is the blue component plus the red component, correct? So therefore, these guys go away, and you're left with 0 equals minus x plus y. And therefore, x equals y, or y equals x. Okay, so therefore, this is also x right here. So what does that mean? It means that this guy here has to be 32. But you don't like this. You want to do a different approach, approach more similar to the ones that we do when we do the other problems. Okay, no problem. It's going to be a bit longer, but we can do it too. We can continue this triangle here and continue all the way until we have a vertical line going upwards and we're going to create a second triangle here. Okay, we know two things about this triangle. One, it's angle, it's the, the, called down ang downward angle because it's continuation of this AB line, this is 25. The other thing we know is that the upwards angle is 30, so this guy here is 30. So that means that this guy here is 180, and this guy here, therefore, which is one of the things we're looking for, is 180 minus 25 minus 30 which happens to be 125 degrees. And if that's true, then this guy here, because it has to have some 180, and this green one here has to be 180 minus 25 minus uh, 125, which is 30 degrees. Okay, so obviously the conclusion is the same, whatever rocks you built. Brilliant. If this is the case, then we can set up our law of signs, which will say that 2.2 um, kilonewtons divided by the sine of, let's be sure, sine of the opposite, so 25 degrees, will be equal to AB, which I'm looking for, right? No, AC I'm looking for. Let's put down here, A, C. We go to AC divided by its opposite angle, so that's sine of 30, which will be equal to the car sine of 125. Guess what? We have two unknowns and we have two equations. So no no problems any longer, right? So if I want to find what is the magnitude of AC, that'll just be two. Let's do this the sine of 30 divided by the sine of 25 times 2.2 kilonewtons. And that is equal to, what did I get? I got 2.6028. So let's go ahead and approximate that to 2.6. So approximately 2.6 kilonewtons. And that'll be one of our answers right there. Right, and then the other one, the car, can basically copy-paste this, right? It's basically copy-paste this. But instead of being sine of 30, it'll be sine of 125 degrees. And that is 4.2642. Let's go ahead and approximate. Yeah, it keeps going. 4.26 is good enough. Okay, and that will be our other answer, right? Magnitude-wise. Magnitude, they're the same. Why? Because of what we talked about in the beginning, right? This magnitude, magnitude of this guy here happens to be the same magnitude of the resulting force so that the two of them cancel each other out, right? Likewise, on the y-axis, the y component of B need to cancel out the y component of C. So they're all in balance. Okay, so if that's the case, then... Um, the car magnitude that we found, that is the um, reaction to the tensions, is also the same as the resultant of 
to um, the two forces being applied to their car. I hope this was straightforward and useful. Uh, if you have any questions, as per usual, just leave them down below in the comment section. Um, this, if this video was helpful, consider giving it a like, and we'll talk soon.